This video gives a justification for why we throw in the RDRD theta when we integrate using polar coordinates. Recall that when we integrate using polar coordinates, we convert the x's to r cosine theta, the y's to r sine theta. We put the bounds of integration in terms of r and theta. And we throw in this area element of r dr d theta. Let's see why this works. First of all, we know that an integral is really a limit of Riemann sums. In this case, since we're going to be working with polar coordinates, we divide the region that we're integrating over into a bunch of little polar rectangles by drawing a bunch of rays out from the origin that are spaced apart by an angle of delta theta. And we draw a bunch of concentric circles whose radii differ by delta r. We can imagine drawing a prism on top of each one of these polar rectangles, the height of the prism being given by the function f that we're integrating. When we add up the volumes of all these little prisms, that gives us an approximation to the integral. And the actual integral is found by taking the limit as the number of little polar rectangles that we're dividing up into goes to infinity. In this formula, we're letting m be the number of intervals in the radial direction, and n be the number of intervals in the angular direction. And the index i counts each interval in this direction, while the index j counts the intervals in this direction. So the little polar rectangle rij means I go i rectangles over in the radial direction and j over in the angular direction. So this rectangle here would actually be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. In this direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It would actually be r7, 6. So now the volume of the prism over polar rectangle rij is going to be the height of the prism times the area of rij. As usual, the height is going to be given by the function evaluated at some sample point, say ri star theta j star. So the height is going to be given by f of ri star cosine theta j star ri star sine theta j star, since that's the sample point converted into x and y coordinates, since f is a function of x and y. So we need to multiply that by the area of rectangle rij. So next, let's work out the area of one of these little polar rectangles rij. If I kind of blow up part of the picture, I get this big wedge. And my polar rectangle is a piece of that wedge. The angle of the wedge is delta theta. And I'm going to call this first radius ri minus 1, and the second larger radius I'll call ri. Now, I know that the area of a circle of radius ri is pi times ri squared. So the area of a wedge of radius ri and angle delta theta, that's this whole shape here, is going to be just a fraction of the area of the circle. So, and that fraction is going to be the angle delta theta over 2 pi, since 2 pi would be the angle in the whole entire circle. That makes sense, right? Because if delta theta were, say, pi, I would have half a circle. Pi over 2 pi is a half. And if delta theta were just like a quarter of 2 pi, or pi over 2, then delta theta over 2 pi would be 1 quarter, and I'd have a quarter of a circle. So that gives the area of my wedge. But I just want the area of this polar rectangle. So I need to 
take the area of the big wedge of radius ri and subtract the area of the smaller wedge of radius r sub i minus 1. So the area of the polar rectangle is going to be delta theta over 2 pi times pi r i squared minus delta theta over 2 pi times pi r i minus 1 squared. Now I'm going to simplify this by canceling out some pi's and factoring out a delta theta over 2. Now I'm going to rewrite some more by factoring out my difference of squares. Let me rearrange things a bit. Now notice that this quantity, this difference of radii, is just my delta r. Carry down my delta theta. And finally, this quantity here is the midpoint between r sub i and r sub i minus 1. So I can think of this midpoint as my sample point, r i star. So in my limit of Riemann sums, I can replace this area with the formula r i star times delta r delta theta. I'll write that down here. As I take the limit of Riemann sums and pass to integral notation, this delta r delta theta becomes my dr d theta. The r sub i star and theta sub j star just become r and theta, and my summation becomes my integral sign. So notice that this extra factor of r in my area element came from the calculation of the area of a polar rectangle as given by this quantity. This video justified the arc length element when integrating using polar coordinates by thinking about the area of a polar rectangle. A polar rectangle with angle delta theta and side length here of delta r that's out at a distance of r has area approximately equal to r delta theta times delta r. And the way I like to remember this is that the area of this rectangle is approximately this side length times that side length. This side length is the delta r, and that side length, which is the arc of a circle out at radius r, is r times the angle delta theta.